This is the rate of monetary expansion. And this is different than what we typically have in Really nice. We have Adam Beck here, the CEO at Blockstream, and today we would like to talk to you about the Liquid Network and what it is. Okay, so it's kind of uh, Bitcoin Layer 2, so people are very familiar with uh, Lightning, which is a Layer 2, and Liquid is a different Layer 2, so I think you can think about it as Lightning being useful for uh, retail payments, micropayments, it has faster settlement, but it keeps most of the security properties of Bitcoin because you can uh, take your coins out of Lightning and back to Bitcoin if the other party stops uh, collaborating. And so Liquid is optimized for exchange traders. So basically people who would uh, place coins on the exchange and actively trade or do arbitrage trades uh, between exchanges. Um, and it has it's it's a, based on a Bitcoin stack, so a Bitcoin technology base. So it's a side chain, mm -hmm. and that means that it has the native currency of Liquid is Bitcoin. So you pay fees in Bitcoin. You can move Bitcoin between the Bitcoin chain and the Liquid chain. It's operated by the exchanges, so by a number of top exchanges, and um, there are you know it's a it's a network which is a peer-to-peer -peer network, so you can run a liquid full node, and you can run wallets and withdraw funds into your wallet. It has additional features that are useful to exchange traders, so in particular it has support for multiple assets. So the assets on liquid are natively understood, so they're not like uh, color coins or anything like that, they're just uh, simply assets. And um, so the biggest example at the moment being Tether US dollar, mm -hmm in liquid format. Yep. And um, so the you can like, withdraw that to a wallet and spend it peer to peer. And if you were an issuer, so like Tether the company, mm -hmm. the way that they create an asset is something that you, you know, a developer could do themselves, which is you make a special type of transaction mm -hmm. which uh, creates an asset and you pay a small Bitcoin fee because the fees are related to the size of this transaction. And by creating the asset, you end up with a key or an, uh, a creation token. And that enables you to create more, or you can choose to make it a one issuance. So you can mark the creation transaction as one use, and then there's a fixed amount. And you can also delete assets. Uh, anybody can delete the assets, mm -hmm. and that's understood by the chain. So you can know the current cap of how many assets there are. Or if it's reissuable, you can issue more. Uh, like say, Tether is an example of something where it makes sense to issue more because when people transfer more money in, they issue more. When people cash them out and take a wire transfer, they delete some, and it's visible. You know, so anybody with a full node can audit. Okay, how many are there? Um, one interesting and novel thing is the creation token is a special coin, and you can transfer it. So if you were to start a company and use the uh, liquid asset for the stock of the company, and you sold the company, you could transfer the issuance token to the new owner of the company, which would allow them to issue more for a, a B round or oh. something like that, right? Okay. So you have some quite interesting properties like that, and you also have confidentiality. So the, the values of the transactions, so if I was to send you one Bitcoin or 10 Bitcoin, the value is encrypted and only known to us, me the sender and you the recipient. Other people on the network and the full nodes and the exchanges don't know how much money, how much Bitcoin is trying to change hands. And they also don't know what type of asset it is. So if it was a tether in a liquid format or if it was a Bitcoin. So you have ambiguity from the observer as to what types as well. It also has, um, a built-in ability to do swaps. Mm -hmm. So uh, a Bitcoin transaction has many inputs and many outputs potentially. That's true of Liquid, but in Liquid, the inputs are, the inputs can have different types. They could have one input, which is a Bitcoin, and one input, which is a Tether. And so there's something called the Liquid Swap Tool mm -hmm. that lets you, uh, so I could put a offer to sell uh, one Bitcoin for $10,000. I can pre-sign that half of it with the right six hash flags, and then I can give it to you, and if you like the price, 
you can attach your output to receive the Bitcoin and you can add an input which is $10,000 to the address that I put and then those combined parts become a full transaction and you can send it to the chain of the settlement. So it's a sort of simplified, more direct atomic swap without being cross-chain. And um, so this is a basic tool. Uh, Digital Garage um, is one of our investors and we have a partnership with Digital Garage and Tachi, which is an uh, interbank settlement network in uh, Japan. And there's a joint venture called Crypto Garage, which is working on a Japanese yen stablecoin. So it's like a tether competitor, mm -hmm. but for the Japanese yeah. institutional market. And uh, Crypto Garage has a regulatory approval for a sandbox, which is operating at the moment uh, for Japanese yen Bitcoin settlement exclusively in the Japanese market to institutions and mostly exchanges and brokers and things like that. And so they have, they operate a network to sort of provide value to participants who want to trade at that level. That was very informative. Thank you very much for it. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely.